Hi, this is Abu Hussein coming to you live and direct from London, the United Kingdom. And today I have a very special guest joining me from Vancouver, Canada. And we are going to talk about funnel hacking, how to blow your competitors out of the water and how to create irresistible uh, offers that sell like hotcakes. Now, if you are watching this interview outside of our free Facebook group for social media marketing agencies, do join us. The link will be around here, there. So without a further ado, Mark Parsons, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Abu. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much for joining me. I know it's uh, just turned noon where you are. So yeah. you know, in, in terms of what you do and uh, your experience and the challenge that you are kind of working on at the moment, give us a bit of an introduction into your world. Yeah, well, what I do when I'm, uh, uh, when I'm working with businesses, I really help them I mean, for those who are familiar with uh, the works of Russell Brunson, I mean, dot com secrets, everything I'm doing is really out of those frameworks. I, lo I look at a business and I see, okay, what assets do you have? And do you have a path that is ascending uh, your buyer to your highest ticket offers? I mean, really, many businesses operate with kind of their core product, but sometimes uh, it doesn't allow them to establish that relationship of building trust with the client. So they're missing out on uh, a lot of potential business because they don't have much front end stuff to kind of reel them in. So I work with, uh, with businesses to help, uh, help them see what is working in their industry. First of all, the, the term hacking is really bypassing all of the trial and error. At the end of the day, somebody has already walked that path in front of you, unless you're creating the next iPhone that doesn't exist yet or something. I mean, in reality, you can find someone who is already selling to your customers. You can find out what they're already buying, and you really want to model your baseline from that. It doesn't mean it's going to work perfectly right off the bat, but there's no need for any business to be reinventing the wheel when for the most part we're, we're selling uh, similar or alternative solutions to uh, problems and customers that are already out there buying that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you touched upon um, Russell Brunson who is known as the founder of ClickFunnels. And yes. in your opinion, what's, what's the difference between a website and a funnel? Because people often got, get them confused. Absolutely. And uh, I always say it's not necessarily one or the other. Most people run in funnels or businesses anyway for, uh, you know, for personal brands, they can run solely off funnels. But the difference between a website and a funnel is a funnel is basically uh, web page by web page holding your buyer through your buying process. At every step of the way, they only have one option. They either say yes to your call to action or they say no to your call to action, which makes it a thousand times easier to see where your problems are. Like you can actually optimize it because you can see where, where you got it wrong. We always have our ideas that like, oh, this will go perfectly. But with a website, you think, oh, you, most people who built their website, whether they knew it or not, they were hoping to build a funnel. They wanted more leads and they wanted more sales, but they build a website and the website is a one-stop shop online brochure to tell you everything uh, about, about your business which I mean, it's fine, but it often acts as a brick wall between the customer and the business's wallet because there's just too many options. I mean, if you've ever gone into the grocery store, for instance, you say, oh, I'm going to go get some, maybe it's something simple like cereal or something. And you look and there's a thousand options and you're like, oh, I'll just get cereal another day. You know, you leave. It's like, I'm, I'm in, I, I'm in too much of a rush. So a website often, um, and, not, and as well, we, we, we will have links to our social profiles, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if someone clicks to your YouTube channel, do you think that you are going to beat YouTube at having their attention and bringing them back to your website to do that purchase? Like it will kill your sales online. If you take them to your Instagram profile, you think they're just going to search your stuff and come back often. I mean, those platforms are designed to bring you down their wormhole with whatever they know you're interested in from your previous searches. So that's a long winded answer, but a, a, a funnel is going to eliminate all of the white noise and 
they can only say yes or no the whole way. And if they say no, you know exactly where that is with a website. When they said no, you often have no idea. If you say to a person, where are you losing the majority of your sales on your website? They got no idea. If you mm -hmm. ask someone in a funnel, they can just pinpoint it and say, okay, we have to fix this kink in the chain here. That was a beautiful answer. It's not long winded at all. I mean, I love the way that you simplify. <laughs> Sometimes things. I just get going on this stuff. Which is one of the reasons I thought I need to speak to you because, you know, <laughs> some of the, the, the way you teach your content is absolutely amazing. So, you know, a lot of people out there go out and they're like, okay, they'll read uh, .com secrets or expert secrets or any other books out there and they'll try to build a funnel and it doesn't work for them. What, what do you think are, are some of the common mistakes people make when building a funnel uh, that they don't get to live the one funnel dream, if you like? Yes, of course, of course. Well, one thing is, um, I mean, funnel hacking is not just the funnel, it's also uh, the offer and the design. So there's many, uh, there's many tools that can help you uh, with this. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if your offer is not something that the audience wants or not seen in value, um, the funnel is not going to make up for a poor offer. So before you even get into a funnel, you want to make sure that you have uh, uh, an offer that people are willing to buy and they're, and, but, and it doesn't have to come right out of your head. There's many, I've got uh, some notes here for uh, the offer hacking side of it. I mean, obviously uh, there's Google. So, I mean, Google, you can find anything. Um, start Googling for stuff that's similar to what you're selling. Those people who are at the top of the search, well, that's a good place to start. Um, another one is clickbank.com. So what Clickbank is, Clickbank is um, uh, it, like an affiliate, an affiliate store, Walmart or whatever you wanna be. If you say you were an accountant and you say, hey, I wanna get into affiliate or I wanna start selling uh, products that make sense to my audience, but I don't want to create it. You could go to ClickBank and type in accounting, or you could type in dentist, or you could type in health. And there's people who have created products in every niche, and they have, um, uh, you know, you'll see the agreements there of what they pay you on each sale and how much it costs. But what you can do, you can go in there, search by industry, look at the top selling um, uh, affiliate programs and you can actually click in and see their funnels, not only just their funnels and what they're offering, you can see their offer, which is very important because in this game of, uh, of creating that value uh, in, in this digital products, often the, the core offer is what they get you to maybe come onto the page with, but then they've got this bonus, this bonus, this bonus, this bonus, and you can actually see the offers that are selling. Once you can see, and this is what the hacking is about and how to not start from scratch, because if you start from scratch, you just give me your core offer, you say, oh, it's not working, what should I add? What about look at what is working? And it's all about modeling, not copying. Um, and you you look at what their bonuses are. You know, are they are they providing physical products? Is it a physical product you could provide? Are they providing videos? Are they doing interviews of other people? Are they providing ebooks? Are they providing like you just start making notes of everything that uh, is working for the offer part? This is what we're talking about right now is the offer because you got to get your offer right or the funnel. The funnel can't sell garbage, right? I mean, you have to get the offer right first. So you go into your marketplace, uh, you get to seeing what is selling, and then you start to brainstorm on how you can put it together. And I mean, just to give you some, uh, if you if you wanted to create an ebook, maybe you had a course or maybe you had whatever, and you're just looking for bonus assets to come. If you wanted to create an ebook on, say, credit repair, well, how I would do that quickly, like if this is your expertise, um, you'll be able to provide the content on it, but you, uh, people often get stuck on the idea, where do I start? Right. So let's say it was credit repair. Well, I would go to Amazon.com. I'd type in credit repair. I'd look at the best selling book and then I'd look at their table of contents. If that's your industry and you know it, all you do, you like I'm in the real estate state space long enough. I could go look at a book that um, is a bestseller. I could look at their table of contents. I'm not saying that I would write that equivalent book. It would depend, but I can look at their table of contents. Uh, and this is a table of contents that is selling. And I know I could write on each topic. 
and then boom, there you go. If you don't even want to go that far of creating your own private private label rights. So what this is, is people who have already created content, and you can get this on any industry. If you type in, if you go to Google and type in PLR, let's say golf, maybe you're selling golf stuff, maybe you have a golf course, but you want some other bonuses to add to it. You can find endless stuff for any industry where it's already pre-written content that you pay for it once. Often it's very, very cheap. And you can resell it as many times as you want. You can put your own logos on. You can edit it if you're not fully aware of it. I'm just talking about speeding up that process, right? Um, how to create an offer that will sell. So first you look at other people's that offer sell, and then you go out and there's tools you can do to make your own because we're not copying, we're, we're modeling what works. And then from there, once you have that offer, then you can go and start hacking the funnels of what well, people like that work right no that's that's a very good way to kind of uh how someone can look at an offer and kind of reverse engineer it if you if you like and you gave a very good example with digital products if someone was, went on clickbank etc say so if someone was running an offline business how you know how would someone apply the same principles for an offline offer where they have their customers maybe walking through the door or um, you know they're doing home visits, uh, something like that. Yeah, so you can you can do lots for uh, for brick and mortar as well. Uh, typically, there will be some sort of digital aspect to it because you always want to make sure that you can connect your result to your efforts. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it could be um, uh, online coupons. It could be uh, discounts of any sorts. It could be memberships. Uh, whatever the case may be, as long as you're using tools that um, that can track those that foot traffic to your funnel, especially if you're working for somebody else, don't even get started till you've figured out how you're going to connect those two because you really need to. Uh, um, I mean. When, when it comes to, uh, to digital marketing, it's all about the numbers. And that doesn't mean it can't be done for brick and mortar. It just means that you have to have those um, uh, tools in place for whatever you're trying to do to make sure you, uh, you can connect them. But mm. definitely 100% doable. And not to mention, every step of the way, when you, if you were doing coupons or memberships or discounts or whatever to get people in the door, you're also building uh, your email list, which is traffic that you can own as that brick and mortar business where you can continue to, um, uh, to present offers uh, to your customers or potential customers because once once you get them on your list not only could you upload it to the likes of Facebook and create custom audiences to now be right in front of them digitally but um, once you have that list you've paid to get it from traffic that you control like Facebook you're kind of paying for it for it it's traffic you can tr control but when you have uh, an email list it truly is traffic that you own because we all know that these big players can change the rules at any time they have done so over the years like for instance Facebook pages used to get like 90 plus organic reach if somebody gave your page a thumbs up and you did a post, they were seeing it. That was it. Now it's pure pay to play. I, I think it is under 2% now, uh, organic reach. And yeah, it's really, it's definitely under 5%. It is, they basically said, you got to pay to play. And most, that, that's how we can expect most platforms to go. Instagram has been moving that direction, even if the likes of TikTok right now, which is, uh, and LinkedIn is very, great organic reach that's all going to change that's just we've seen it enough times now to know that's how it works first it's getting people engulfed in it where it's part of our uh um uh day to day and then they will make the businesses pay to play okay uh so you've given a very kind of a you know very detailed answer in terms of offer hacking and how you can do it for online and offline products so that i suppose going back to the question of uh, funnels. The first page of a funnel is obviously the landing page. What do you feel are the core components of an effective uh, high converting landing page? So from uh, from a theoretical standpoint, you're you're looking for the the hook, the story, and the offer, and that comes from. And this is really what 
if you break it down the principle, that's what you're trying to hack the whole way. And we can get into design after because design is the last factor, but it's hook story and offer. And that's from the ad to the landing page to the, to the upsell. So the hook is typically going to be uh, your, your, um, your headline. The goal is to generate enough curiosity where they're going to consume your story, whether that's a video or whether that is a uh, long form copy. Uh, how I would define the story, because people will say, well, story, a story is the part, and it, uh, it is the part that, it's the messaging used to make the consumer feel that your offer is relatable to them. And, you know, sometimes, like to give you an example, like if we go on the front end, a Facebook ad, the image could be the hook and the story. Like if it's a financial ad, so it doesn't, as you get deeper in and you're asking more from them, like the ad you're asking for a click. So it doesn't have to be too much. The next page, maybe you're just asking for their email, doesn't have to be too much, but then maybe you're trying to sell them for 500 bucks. It's gonna be longer and more detailed. But to give you an example of hook story offer the whole way, uh, an ad is where some people try and say, well, what would my story be in an ad? It's almost, uh, it, it's too short and concise. But I mean, the hook, the, the, the image could be the hook and the offer because the hook is whatever gets them to stop scrolling. Now that may be the headline, that may be the image. Uh, the story, it could be the copy in the ad but to give uh, an example let's say it was an ad to do with financial difficulty or something your story could be the image of the guy you know those pictures the image of the guy in front of the computer and maybe as a calculator and a pen or something he's like pulling his hair that's a story and if that relates to the person that could be the messaging that says to the person like whoa i should check this out because i feel like i've been in that guy's shoes you know um, so then you get on to the next page. And again, it's always hook story offer. Um, it will come in different lengths depending on, like if you go to a page that's trying to sell you on a couple thousand dollars, there's enough stuff on there to uh, uh, have you there for 20, 30 minutes as you make that decision. And part of that story may be, uh, it could be uh, testimonials. It could be social proof. It certainly would be uh, some story of how it helped somebody with a similar problem solve that problem identifying you know the before state and after state of using your product the before state is the pain you're in and the after state is how you will feel after whether it's uh, accomplishing what you want relieving the pain uh, achieving your core desire but that's how i would decide uh to keep it simple, hook story offer, and it doesn't matter if we're talking a small little thing of an ad or a big, huge, long sales page, just understand um, the more that you're asking from them, your story is likely going to have to uh, have more meat and potatoes to it, and your offer is obviously going to have to uh, appear more valuable. You know, you can get an email with an ebook, but don't, in, in 2020, if you're trying to sell an ebook for 60 bucks, you better be somebody who has an audience who is just buyers in heat for them. Like maybe Tony Robbins could, because people would know anything he drops. I've been buying from him for 15 years and I know he's always going to over deliver on the amount of money I give him. And there's lots of people with audiences like that, Russell Brunson included, uh, but that's not where most of us are. So you're really going to need to uh, uh, make sure that the, you're delivering value. And that's where the offer creation comes in. Uh, you get them to interested in your core product based on that price, but then you just slam them with more and more and more value to make sure that they're comfortable. And if, if they leave satisfied buying a $50 product or whatever, uh, that you have delivered them more value than what they paid, that's the only thing that matters. If you want to ascend them up your value ladder, meaning you may start with a free ebook and then a $37. I mean, it depends on the industry. It could jump higher, it, you know, uh, depends on who you are and what you're selling. But the key is to always over deliver on value. You, this is build the know you like you trust you factor. Uh, if you give them a, a, an ebook for an email, they better not feel like you just stole their email when they read that ebook. You know what I mean? And if you sell them for something for $37 or you, you want them to be like, whoa, they, 
it, they got to be blown away and that's how you can ascend them up uh, and eventually turn you you know turn yourself into one of these people who have a tribe of buyers who really already know they want to buy everything you're selling before you sell it their only question is uh can i afford that right now the ones who can you want people that know they can afford it to buy it without thinking and of course you're always going to have different people at different levels who want it uh but um yeah perfect and uh, you know you touched on design there as well and i know different people have different opinions in how important design is because on one side you have the simple and ugly side who believe that that model works really well and then on the new generation of click funnel <laughs> gurus if you like they've got sophisticated high quality high impact graphics you know um what kind of funnels do you find works best well yeah so this uh this this is what it comes down to um you want to find out who is um what people are already buying in terms of what you're hoping to sell who is already selling it who's selling it well and then you're going to look at their funnels because there's no there's no right answer for that you want to hack into your industry to something that is selling to the audience selling to the audience that you're uh looking to sell to or similar audience and a product or service that you're looking to sell. So once you've tapped into somebody who's successfully selling to your audience and, um, and, and selling something similar to what you're selling for and they're doing it successfully, that is the funnel that you want to model. Whether it is simple or complicated, doesn't matter. That's the one you want to model. So uh, it will really depend. Um, generally they don't got to be complicated often redesigns to make things simpler increase conversions but with that said you just want a model who's um uh who's already doing it out there and there are like there's simple tools that uh you can quickly model because uh, i'm not a designer at all but once i learned uh the design hacking side and using click funnels well it's it's really dead simple but um so I'm going to follow that process to find someone uh, who is selling to the same audience and, and selling a similar product. So what I want to know is what, what does a design look like that the people who I want them to buy from me, like give me money are giving money. You know, you want to know what that one looks like. And then it's simple things. Uh, you, uh, sorry chrome extensions chrome extensions you get a color you get your color pick eyedropper you can get colors just like that so you can pull pull color schemes like uh exactly and precisely uh font ninja you can i mean i'm not a person who knows all fonts and this or that but if that's what's working you can go in and you can uh you, there's tools that just you put your cursor over it and boom you've got uh, you've got the fonts there and then also you can use page rulers because you really want to pay respect to spacing and how things uh, are done on websites how things visually do because um uh it's just important it's important but so i i, I yes that's a process find who's selling who you want and and what they want like the the, the transactions are already happening mm -hmm. you don't need to sell something that's not already selling you it's it's already out there so find what that is and then again it doesn't have to be the exact same it becomes your base model otherwise your base model is looking at every website on the internet that sells or doesn't sell you know like if you didn't go through that first process well then then you probably end up just looking at what you like what you like and that that's dangerous. That's dangerous land. You want to, you just want to be modeling what works, not what, I mean, especially myself, maybe some real mm -hmm. top end designers can go with their gut, but that's not me. Yeah. And that's not hacking. That's not hacking. That's fine. I mean, you see the yellow brick road, you need to follow the yellow brick road, right? <laughs> exactly. And the last portion of this, so we've kind of gone through the offer hacking and the funnel hacking and the design. And then the last portion is the traffic. And so you want to know who's already selling to your, uh, to your ideal clients. Russell uh, Brunson calls it the dream 100. You find people who already have the audience you want to sell to and you find out what is selling because you did your offer hacking. Then you made sure your design was right. Okay. Well now you want to go get the traffic and there's tools for that as well. You can go, um, 
for instance, Facebook ads library. Now, ever since Zuckerberg was under the Supreme Court a couple years back there, it's a marketer's dream. They opened up uh, all, we can now see every ad that every page has been running and you can look at them based on, it doesn't show everything. You can't see money spent, but let's say if they have an ad that's been running for six months, like it's, it's running because it's working, you know, so you can, uh, Sorry, I'm getting off track because we're talking about traffic, but the, the, the Facebook ads right. library is, is, is gold and you can click your way through to their funnel and do all this hacking. But uh, in terms of traffic, sorry, you can, you can go to Facebook Audience Insights and of course this is kind of for bigger names, so this may not fit for uh, every company, but you can go and you can literally choose pages and market to the people who like their page. And if you go to Audience Insights, you can go to the big page and see what the people who like this page, because you may know of, uh, let's say for instance, real estate in the US, Zillow.com is like the Ooh. juggernaut, or you could say Tony Robbins, he's a juggernaut name. You could go and see people who liked his page, but then it'll also give you, here's the top 10 other pages that people here liked. And then you start adding these to your interests and you can, the traffic is already there. This is an important part of the hacking process. You are not creating traffic. You are not getting anybody from their kitchen table and bringing them to their computer. The traffic is already there. You have to identify it and get your offer in front of it. Another tool, um, similarweb.com, you can actually go website by website and you can see where they're getting their traffic from and where they're, where they're placing their offers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Perfect. from, from that, uh, if you know that they're selling to your audience or selling something, uh, similar to what you're selling, the, you've modeled the kind of look and feel of their funnel and their hook story offer along the way. Then you see where they're advertising to, uh, where they are getting their traffic from. I mean, it's not going to turn you into Tony Robbins overnight, but you can eliminate so much trial and error. And the thing is, the reason, in my opinion, that most businesses fail is from trial and error, trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so all, all hacking is, is to hopefully remove 80 to 90% of the trial and error. It's not just going to turn into this ATM, but starting from there and then focusing on a funnel where you can see every step of the way where conversion from page one to two was good, two to three, and, and, and see where it goes wrong. It's just, it's just the, the best process to take. Uh, in order to minimize trial and error, because trial and error in business can also be uh, termed as bleeding money. Maybe mm -hmm. a lot, maybe a little, but the trial and error process is money tested, money gone. So the more that you can eliminate the trial and error by modeling what is already proven to work by people who are already selling to an audience that you want to sell to, that's already buying, you see where the traffic's coming from. Like nothing is perfect, but you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Mark, you've been very generous with what you've shared with us here. I feel like I can literally just take this video and turn it into a front end product. That's how much <laughs> I <laughs> well, hang on, let's get, let's stack the offer. It'll be our core <laughs> offer. <laughs> absolutely. You know, and I, I've only got you for half an hour. So kind of before we say our farewells, uh, You've got a Facebook group uh, where you kind of cover all of this. Do you want to talk us uh, through a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so the Facebook, group, uh, the Facebook group is called Online Freedom Fighters. A uh, little bit of a, a cheesy name. Maybe I'll change it at some time, but it was really based behind the thing, uh, behind the idea of I know there's a lot of people out there who aren't, satisfied in, in a regular look nine to five. So it's online freedom fighters in the fact that, you know, help people walk that path to taking their expertise online. And uh, trust me, it's still work. Like, uh, you know, leaving a nine to five is good. It's still work, but it's funny because when this pandemic came, 
Like I always wanted location freedom to think that I could be anywhere uh, and work and that would be really cool. But when this hit, it's like, whoa, what about the, we never thought of this when you have to stay inside. Can you still work? Can you still get things done? But anyway, I'm getting off track there. So the, the group Online Freedom Fighters is there to uh, educate people on the, the principles that uh, we've gone in through in this interview and go deeper on it. A lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the um, print, sorry, my kids out there trying it's to say. It's so good, it's so good. Uh, uh, the, the majority of the principles do uh, come from Russell Brunson, but it expands from there as well. And I will let people know who are thinking, uh, if you've heard of the One Funnel Away Challenge, this book comes with it. It's called um, You Suddenly Lose Everything in 30 Days. So the One Funnel Away Challenge, it's just uh, put on by ClickFunnels, but this book, you can only get through there. And what it's taken is 30 entrepreneurs who have made over a million dollars in a single funnel and ask and like in a single funnel. So one that works and ask them if you lost everything tomorrow and you only had 30 days, what would you do? So it's got 30, 30 day blueprints from million dollar entrepreneurs that, um, I think it's like 27 different niches. Like I think there were two e-commerce, but so for people who are starting out, this book is priceless. Like I'll rifle through some of them, high ticket coaching, uh, e-commerce, uh, starting as a service provider, mid-range info products, uh, creating a seven day challenge, eBooks launch, affiliate marketing, coaching clients. Uh, like there's just so many of them and it gives a 30 day blueprint of what they would do. Now, of course there are people who've already had, had, uh, massive success so some of the steps um uh, for them might be a little different than what you would do but the insight the insight in this like it's just insane but i get on tangent so i was getting off track there but yes everyone is welcome to uh come check out online freedom fighters you'll uh you'll you'll see the banner with my bald face on uh -huh. it and the bald head so it'll be identifiable um but yeah i'm, I'm there to just share the information because what i find is the more i teach it the more i internalize it the more i'm able to unpackage and repackage it like there's something about that and just like you doing interviews like there's something about when you're teaching it it's kind of an internal dialogue with um well because i do it online if you were doing it in a class but with, with your interviews it's it's a back and forth but it has you unpackaging and repackaging ideas and it just polishes 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 things off more and yeah i i, I teach it because i mean i want to help people and it really helps me internalize the the information as well well, Mark, you have been very generous. I have loved every second of our conversation. I'm going to tag you to the video. So whoever Absolutely, is please. finding out more and joining your group can, can do so. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Abul. We'll be in touch.